Okay, we're now recording. Um, so here's what we'll be covering in this session. <laughs> um, okay, first thing is we're going to do a little bit about what our eyes are and how many, it's not a trick question, how many colors of balls do you see? No, what's that? Three. I see three. That's yeah. that's that's a common answer. So what what we're doing is we're looking at certain illusions of how we see things. So as I go to the next slide, and you just remember this one in your brain, as we go over here, all we do is change the colors, and what happens is the illusion comes from your retinal cells adjusting to the brightness of an image. So by adjusting the intensity of the light signal. In, in, in small sections, it allows you to see a whole range of both light, light and dark colors. So really all the balls are the same color, but your, your, how your eyes work, and that's an important thing to, to what we're looking at because not only is it about your eyes, it's about camera angles and camera lenses as well. So um, you know what we see isn't always what we get, so to speak. And I'm gonna make one more, so this is a different, um, concept this is called a Herman chart and it really teaches you how your eyes work as you move your head around a little bit you're gonna see that the the white and black dart dots are kind of changing color as you as you move your head so the size of the sections of what you can see in this is determined by the size of your, of your retinal features and, and the receptacles in your retina so some of it is de of, of your eye is 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 allocated for peripheral vision and some for direct version vision. So the size of your eye and what you see also varies. So what I want you to do is if you look at this and you're staring straight on and you hold your head still, it looks like it's normal. But if you turn your head to the side and look at it from the side, from the side, you're gonna see all those lights are all the same using your peripheral vision. So all that we're trying to show you is looking at the same thing, you see different things. And this is just a natural way of how to understand that your eyes work. Now, how does that apply to squash? Well, it actually applies quite a bit. So, and we're gonna look at this. So what we're gonna do first is I'm going to show you a few decisions. Now, make sure that everybody is ready because you're only going to see the clip and the movement once. And what I want you to do is write down what your decision is based on what you see. So I'll show the first one twice just so everybody gets used to it. So here we go. See this being overturned, Joey. So everyone got their decision or you wanna see it again? See it again, please. <laughs> okay, one more time, here we go. this being overturned Joey. So write down what your decision is. We're going to go on to the next one. Paul Cole just kind of saying about the the hand on his back there as well. It's kind of a bit we talk about some players sometimes. Okay. Don't worry about what the commentators are saying. Okay, here we go. Now n these clips are not the same so I know that they look very similar and everybody's used to this match. This is, uh, let's have a look at this. All right, that's the decision number three. Here comes number four. I'm on the wall. And he's wearing atomic peach. Okay. We're going to look at one more. Shot, yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of contact, but I'm pretty sure Paul Cole could have gone through and played this. We need to give him an excess. Like okay. I know we've kind of beat these clips up to, to, to death, so to speak. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a purpose of what we're trying to do. And we're not really analyzing the decisions. We're just trying to see how everything works and what we need to do. Everyone got their five decisions? Five. Okay. So now let's talk a little bit about what the duties of a video referee. This is really the technical side of what, what, what a, a video referee is responsible for. They, they need to handle all the video related decisions, obviously. When a decision comes through, they look on the screen 
um, they're able to change the angles and talk to the crew which angle that they want to use uh, to to see the decision and to communicate with the with the referee. Their job is also to keep score. Now that's important because um, we used to have the we used to have refers and referees and markers. Then we had three referees, and in that system, the the referee on the right was was keeping score. So that way, if there's ever a debate about the score, we have somebody and the referee isn't left out there on his own. They also need to keep the time, uh, time for the warm up, time between games, just in case there's any computer malfunction or anything going on during the match. Um, this is very important and you don't think about it until it actually happens to you, but injury time and related issues. So for example, if there's an injury on the court and the referee goes down to the court, he sometimes, he will allot an amount of time, but he doesn't have the watch because his pad's up in, in, in the center in the center where he left his seat. Um, he doesn't uh, remember maybe what the score is after a blood injury. You come back, then you're able to communicate back to the referee to say, um, it's 3-2, Jones is serving from the right. Um, or if, there's a, if it's related to injury, you can say, you got, you know, you've allotted, you know, 10 minutes there's three minutes left or whatever the situation may be. Um, you also need to track the reviews. Player that has said has had a review and either successfully or unsuccessfully challenged the decision. So that way in case there's any technical issue again or the referee does not mark it correctly on the pad, when a player asks for a review, you are able to say, Mr. Jones has already used his review. He used it at four six in the third game. So it's already done. So we need to be able to track that. And then we also need to be able to communicate the, that review status at critical times. For example, you know, late, late in a match, it's 9-8. It's you may want to review or remind the center referee, uh, Abugar has no reviews reveal, uh, uh, um, remaining. So sometimes referees uh, will make decisions based on the fact that they'll make a decision and, and uh, if they disagree, they can review it. Um, but it can affect how you're actually refereeing the match and knowing that may come into play. Um, any questions on that so far? I guess silence means consensus. Hey, uh, Sheldon? Yeah. Um, don't they always, what, what if it's a, a video decision when the referee uh, passes it off? Isn't that the um, video referee makes that call? Yes, so uh, I, I have that under all video related decisions. So a video, uh, you know, ref video referee decision would go back and where the referee uh, manages that decision in consultation with the center referee. Uh, my question is, can the referee keep, take the pad when leaving his seat? Yeah, so sometimes you got plugged in, sometimes you got the pad, sometimes you need the mic. Uh, you do what you feel comfortable with. Uh, you know, if you're in a huge crowd and can't get around, you may need your hands free, and now you've got your mic, your handset, your your pad, your hands are full as you're walking around. So you, there isn't really a regulation. You just do what seems appropriate when that occurs. Uh, Sheldon? Yeah. Spear, uh, is there a, a, a different uh, score sheet for the video ref that would that you can put down all this information? I, I uh, of what they what they do. I mean, we can we can put this into a. Uh, you know, a, a white page so everyone can have it if that would be easier for you. And well, uh, I'll, I'll, I can, I can just put the, the, the summary of these items on that if that makes it easier for you, Pereira. Pierre. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to get into what the requirements of a video referee are. So it's very important that the rev, the video ref understands and as, and is engaged in the match. You need to make sure that you understand what's happening. You're hearing the conversations between the referee and the player. You're, you're watching that match as if you're the referee. The two referees, the center referee and the video referee, very much have to work in tandem to understand what's going on. And we'll, we'll get more specific as, as we go through some of these points. It's also very important that you're listening to what the referee is saying. I'll give you a perfect example. Sometimes I've seen referees say they warn a player for not making enough effort to go to a ball or they're not taking the correct path to the ball. 
and if they do that again, they are going to be penalized or that there's going to be some kind of action with that player. Then we see just a couple points later, that exact situation comes through, the ref penalizes them, it goes back to refer the video referee and the video referee overturns it. Uh, that happens and it actually causes a lot of problems in the match where the referee is then you know, accused of being inconsistent. Other players are now chiming in that said, you said that they weren't gonna get that decision. And that all comes from the referee looking at that one decision uh, in, in isolation and not listening to the referee or not understanding what's actually happening in the match. Also along the same lines is watching for influential decisions. We all do the assessments and we're talking about is a decision difficult or influential? Understanding and listening to the ref and understanding the explanations or the communication is very, very important because the decision that the referee makes can influence the match so can your decision making that. Um, understanding the line of the referee, and more importantly, the tolerance of your line. This is really, really important. If you go back to these sessions that we have where we put up all the decisions, and we don't, we're not talking about what the decision is being right and being wrong. We're actually talking about all the variance in the decision. So if you look at, as we're going through these sessions where we're, we're doing the video analysis, um, we're not saying that your decision is wrong. We're trying to teach you what the line of the PSA or the line of the professional referees or the line of US squash is. Our line may be different from your line. And you need to understand that as a video referee, not only how you're uh, understanding the match, how you see it, but you have to be tolerant of what your line is. Remember that nobody in, in all these sessions got 100% of the decisions correct. So we all have a very big variance in what our decisions, and we're trying to get everybody onto the same line, but you will always view a match often a lot, you know, a little bit differently than what somebody else is, either between how you see it or how you manage it. We've kind of talked about how we speak during play, like the way that Mike speaks to a player is different than the way that I speak to a player. And that's our styles. And, and you, you have to understand those styles and really uh, understand who you are as a ref and your responsibilities as a video referee. So I say that by saying, do, do not work in a silo. Do not look at decisions in isolation and don't, do not work solely on your own, only on what you've seen in that last one or two minutes because you have to take it as a whole package. That's why we put all this together on the, on the same slide. And also, be prepared to provide information to the commentators. So a lot of times you'll make a decision and you'll hear the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the video person that's broadcasting the match next to you saying, what was the rationale behind that decision? Just give a brief explanation of what you, the rationale was behind that decision. Meaning he couldn't have reached the ball. He took the wrong path to the ball. Just a brief explanation. So that way uh, they can communicate back to the audience. Although understand that that's part of what you're required to do in the presentation of a game at a very high level. Any questions so far? That last comment, Sheldon, providing the information over the public or with your connection to the video ref. Right, so, so what happens if you haven't been in the video booth, you're sitting with the production engineers. The production engineers has the commentators in their ear. The, com the commentators will ask the production person to ask the referee, what was the rationale behind that decision? So you'll be turning to the person immediately to your left or, uh, or your right, and you'll be saying, you know, here's what my explanation was. They will communicate it to the commentators. That is not to go out onto the, uh, into the center audience where the central referee is the only person that communicates to the audience. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. Okay. So, I have a question for you, Sheldon, about that. Yep. Um, is squash one of the few sports or the only sport in which the broadcasters and people who provide the color commentary are the, the only ones who can get away with criticizing or disagreeing with or howling about referee decisions? I mean, I know there's a show involved, but I don't know of any, I don't really, I don't watch a lot of sports on, on you know, I know a lot about sports, but 
you see disagreements, and but you never really see major broadcasters really putting down the referees. Well, there's a couple of things. It's a good point. So I can tell you that uh, in, in rugby, for example, you can actually listen to the, the frequency of the referees that are actually talking to each other and the video person. And you can actually listen to them as they're going through the match, what they're telling the players, what they're telling um, uh, you know, each other. And that's picked up by the commentators and then fed into the spectator side. In, in soccer, there is a similar thing that they can actually now hear uh, on video reviews that, uh, that the video review and the referee can communicate with each other. Uh, and that's actually now being broadcast through. So that technology isn't there, but what we are hearing is that the, the, ref, you know, the commentators do want to understand and communicate back to the audience of what they're seeing or hearing. So really it's about presentation and they do want to understand and give that information uh, back to the audience. The commentator's job is to provide background, commentary, entertainment, the referees just to, 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 to give them little pieces of advice and information on what they're seeing. So that, that dialogue is constructive to the game. Um, we are seeing it in different forms in a few different sports. And those are the only ones I can really speak to where I see it actively engaged. Okay. I just remember three years ago when Mike was a video referee and he practically told the commentators to shut their mouths because he didn't like what they were saying about their calls. So I don't think that's appropriate. That's all I'm getting at. Yeah. Well, listen, the commentator's job is to commentate. And, you know, we, we, their job is to make the, the experience entertaining and to present it at the highest level. And you know what? We get decisions wrong. And sometimes I look up at the screen after I've made a very easy, simple decision and realize that I got it completely wrong. And I hope that, you know, that they'll take it easy on me. But they have a role and a job to do, as, as do we. And, you know, as, as referees, we have to be, have, have kind of thick skin. So I put up this slide to say, we obviously have different perspectives of what can happen. And when the referee is surrounded by a lot of things going on, a lot of activities, uh, the, the players are arguing with them. You know, you look, just look at this and, you know, they could be arguing or they could just be doing the Macarena, whichever one it is. So, you know, you do have a different perspective from where you are, from what you see. And it's very important that we realize that. And uh, sometimes it takes, uh, the referee can become flustered in the center and they just need a couple of words to get through. Um, you know, I, I can give you a perfect example is uh, I, I was engaged in something where I lost track of what happened and Wayne was uh, my video review and he just put some words and say he's asking for a let or that's not what he's asking for. The ball was out and it's just a couple of words that put me back on track uh, that, that focuses in on what the match is going, uh, what's going on in the match. So it's very important that we we use that perspective and we're, we're separated from the action and we're there to support the referee. Um, let's, we're going to go through the responsibilities now of a referee or of the video referee. So understand that your job is as, as a, as a team is to come through to ensure a fair outcome. You're there to support the center referee. That's why your duties include scorekeeping, timekeeping, making decisions, communicating, all of those there are really to come through and make the team comes through. You have a spokesman that's really the center referee and you're working through that together. Um, I, I, I put it in the last slide, but I can't say it enough. Do not look at the decisions in isolation. We, we make that mistake too often and we lose context of what's going on in the match and it creates more problems. Understand camera angles and the views. And we're going to get into that in just a few minutes. Um, and then document decisions for development. When you're the video referee, if odd things happen, decisions that you don't understand, decisions that you think would be interesting, that's where all the clips that we get, that we review, that you see on uh, Clip of the Week, that you see in our training sessions, a lot of these clips all come through because our referees are engaged in what's going on, they're understanding what's happening, and then they're documenting certain decisions that we can provide in our sessions for discussion the following day or for training and development or future sessions. So it's really important that we do that. The next thing that's, that's new to most of you is that we have to track 
patterns of play. And I'm going to show you some specific things. This is the score, this is an assessment sheet. It can be done on a score sheet. It can be done anywhere else. But as you can see, these sections here with the five boxes on the court, a lot of people don't use that space. Um, they, what they're for is either to say, when you're making assessment decisions that's up in this area, you go down here and you draw the diagram so you can go back to it and reflect it with the referee. But these boxes are very, very useful for the video referee. If I don't have one, I draw my own box. Now, if you went through the assessment training uh, video uh, where we did assessor training, uh, we, we pulled apart the Hanny and Adele match. This is what that, that tracking sheet actually does for you. When you're into a 40, 45 decision related match, by tracking where all the decisions are, this helps you communicate to the referee the problem is clearly in the center left-hand side, there's a lot of decisions. Whether you're tracking them as let strokes but, or whatever that they are, you've got, that's where the problem is. So if, if a player is having you know, one decision up here, that's not where you want the referee to attack. You wanna make sure that they are understanding that there's a pattern of decision and conflict on the left-hand side of that service box. And out of the 40 referees, when we did the assessment training, uh, only one actually picked up on that fact and because they're actually understanding the movement in play. So as a video referee, we need you to be able to communicate that and you can't communicate it if you're not tracking it. Just little dots of where they are, little X's. Uh, as you get more comfortable with it, you'll be able to say, you know, who's doing what, what the, whether what the decision is, and that becomes very useful as we move forward. Any questions on that? Silence is consensus. Excellent. Okay. So I want to go back and we're going to do the next five decisions. Um, so we're actually on to decision six. Okay. And it's going to be the same thing. We're going to see one clip uh, and then just make your decision as we go forward. Here we go. Three, two, one. Okay. Next decision, number seven. Well, I don't think this is going to get overturned. Paul Cole just kind of say. All right. Number eight. Going to be branding on the front wall. Or am I, is that my color blindness again? Oh. It's color blindness. Sorry. Absolutely. Is it? Yeah, it's red. Hang on. This should be number eight is on the left. Yes, sir. Now we'll do number nine again. Sorry. Oh. You can be branding on the front wall. Or am I, is that my color blindness again? That's color blindness. Absolutely. Is it? Yeah, it's red on the floor and on the wall. It's wearing atomic pink. And then lastly, number 10. Oh no, wow, that's poor. Okay, all right. So we've got, everyone should have 10 decisions down on their paper. Sheldon, does this prove that we need to ban pink and green? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So what I want you to do now is I want you to look at all your decisions, right? And uh, I want you to take your paper and I want you to, uh, what I want you to do and what we're learning in this case is it's harder to do this by video, but decisions one through five and decisions six through 10 are identical. So if you match up your decision for one against six, two against seven, three against eight, four against nine, five against 10, are your decisions exactly the same? No. <laughs> Only number one is different. 
Okay. So one, you, you, you made two different decisions based on the information that you saw. So how can that be? And what we're trying to, so the principle in this, so now I'm going to go and show you, I'm going to show you decision 10 and decision five, again, uh, back to back, and you'll see that they're identical, but you, a lot of people have these as different. So here comes decision five. If you notice that the score is eight, five, it's two, one, and the ball's going to come over to the right-hand side. So that is the exact decision as here. Oh, no. Oh, that's cool. No, sorry. That, sorry. No, that wasn't, that wasn't yeah, number sure five. So, yeah. yeah. Contact, well, I'm yeah. sure Paul Cole could have gone through. Okay, yeah. That's the right view. So I'll show it to you one more time. So that's the exact same clip from two different angles. So what I want you to know is when we showed you the first clips, the first five clips were all from the overhead angle. The last five clips were all from the back angle. We find that the majority of the decisions that you're making are all correct from the back angle. So we have to be very, very careful from the correct angle because when you're a video referee, you need to understand the camera is not overhead. It's set back or set forward depending on where the cross structure is in the court. So when we've tracked this, the difference in the player's position and ball can be as high as two to three feet from where you're actually seeing it. <coughs> Remember the eye thing that we talk about, the camera angles are different because of the angle. From the back, you're looking straight forward and your angle's consistent. From the overhead, you're seeing a different view and that angle is, is misconstrued because of the angle that it's actually looking back. We think that it's overhead, but it's not. And it's very important that you understand that. So what we're not, we're not having this session where we're debating on what the decisions are, Really, the purpose of it is, is to understand that given the same angles, you will make different decisions. So what we always want to make sure that you're focusing on is, number one, the back angle is generally the most important, and it's the best decision and what the referee is seeing. The overhead decision can only, you know, can, you can be used, but understand that that angle and that view can be a lot different. Also, sometimes we ask uh, the, the video crew to go through to that very front angle, which is also useful in the movement of the players. So as you go through it in an exercise, understand that you just looked at 10 decisions and you have varying views of the same thing. All that's different is you have a different angle. And that's really the purpose of what we're trying to get through as a video referee is to look at it from not only all the angles, but to understand the difference between the angles. Also, when we had three referee systems, we used to track the, the frequency that the referees were in the majority of the decisions. So, you know, if you were, you know, I'll, I'll use an example. Let's say that I was in the majority of the three decisions 85% of the time, um, or you know, somebody else was 90% of the time. We always found that the decision on the right hand, the person on the right hand wall was usually eight to 10% less uh, in the majority as the other two. And that's really simple because more decisions were on the left, uh, but you have a different angle of that view coming across. So understanding that your angles, your views, all have an impact on the, on the outcome of the decision and the outcome of the game. Uh, is that interesting? Find any comments on that? Yeah, so Bob here, my, my first comment is thank you for the information about the overhead camera not being necessarily plumb in the middle. I, I had not been aware of that. So it, it sometimes positioned forward of the middle or back of the middle, is that what you're saying? It's, it's usually about uh, probably four, four, four or five feet forward okay. of the T-line. So when you're video referee, 
you've really got to think through the view of the back is the most important one and not necessarily to override the decision based on what you see on the overhead, right? Yeah, like a lot of referees, a lot of video referees will go, oh, that's a let, oh, that's a stroke. Oh, that's a let, that's a stroke. And it looks different between the two angles. And what we're trying to teach you is that it does. It is different between the two angles. There is a difference and it's a difference because of the angle. And what we want to do is really look at the decisions that we come through. If you, if you, if you'll see this week's clip of the week, I actually take two different angles where you can see, and I tell you to look at a different thing in each angle. Uh, and that just came out earlier. Uh, but when you see the solution clause, you'll see that the, uh, um, that the angles show different things and what we're looking for. So we look for movement in one and the ball placement in another. And then you combine all that information to make a decision. Remember at the very first slide we had is the color of balls. We had all the information there to make a decision, but we just didn't isolate it and extract it all the way that we needed to do. Sheldon, so I'm not completely clear then on what your instructions are to the video referee. Are you telling him, look at it from the point of view of the referee who's behind the glass? Or are you telling him, look at it from the superior point of view that you have from overhead? Or what, what we're telling you is that, so when you look at your sheet, you had 10 questions, right? And your questions probably weren't identical. So what we're trying to teach you is to understand that there is a difference when you're looking at the play in the angle that you see. So if you're looking at it from the back view, your decision is different from your overhead view. So what we want you to do is make sure that as you're making your decision that you understand that there's different angles of the camera which may distort your decision. So you have to really take that into account. Look at it from the back and you're looking to see what your movement is and where the players are. And then we look at it from the overhead don't be swayed by everything that you see. You can take that into account, but then sometimes I look at that overhead view and I go back to the backhand view to see if I see it the same way, then I make my decision. So really it's about getting all the information to make the decision, but not being swayed by one particular view over another. Understanding that that camera, an overhead camera does not mean it's overhead. Uh, a lot of times, it, especially at the back of the court, it looks like from the overhead view, there's only two feet between the player and the back wall. And then from the, from the back view, you can see that they're standing on the back of the service box. So what we're wanting to show you is that there is a difference in the camera angles. And, and the reason that we go through this exercise where you put through your 10 decisions is understanding that those decisions are important, uh, that, that the angle changes your decision. So you wanna factor that in. So we're trying to teach you and educate you that to take that in, not about understanding what's right and wrong, understanding the different ways to come to a consensus or decision. Hey, Sheldon. Yeah. How, why doesn't the PSA uh, construct a method to put the camera in the middle? Well, it, even if they put it in the middle, the play doesn't always happen in the middle. So I understand. Yeah, yeah. So it's really the construction of where that center beam is. And, uh, you know, that beams further over. So it's really for the construction of where the panels are more than the construction of the court. But even if they put that on the center, you're still going to have a problem moving forward and you're still going to have a problem moving back. So what we're trying to do is the, the angles are important, but understanding that's why you notice that we don't call line balls uh, on, on what we have because we don't have an angle right on that line and it can be distorted, distorted of, of where the ball touches. So, okay. You know, Thank you. It's just yeah, just understanding it's it's a good point, and yeah, but a lot of people think the overhead camera is overhead. Um, if you go back to the old court where uh, it's the brown court um, with the brown floor, uh, if you go back to like 2016, 2015, that that camera is actually more centered, but it's just where the activity is, and just understanding that overhead does not mean overhead. The players are in different spec perspectives. If it's on the right or to the left, you're looking at it from a different angle, and that's really important to know in your decision-making process. Does that make sense? Roger that, thank you. Good. Um, okay, I mean, was that interesting for people to see, the, the, the 10 decisions? I mean, uh, very few people get all five right. Um, some of the people have taken this session before, and hopefully they, they got it right this time, uh, or had a little different perspective as, as, as they did it. Um, if we match up 100%, do we get a promotion, Sheldon? 
Um, <laughs> only if you can spell it. Uh, two M's, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Um, all right. So a couple, couple things. So in, in review, we, we want to make sure that you understand that you're, you're the importance of the role of a video referee and how you can influence the game and the match and the requirements to support the referee. The impact that your view can have on a decision and calling for the different views. Um, very much understanding the impact the camera angle can have. Uh, and you can go back to this match. You've all, we've all analyzed it to, to death. Uh, Cole and Dasuki, um, we've, we've, this has been a match that we've taught on. It's been a match that we've analyzed. It's been a match that's been d d d just pulled apart and analyzed. Just look at the different views from this perspective and understanding now what you know, and you'll see it a lot differently. And uh, see if you go back and change any of your decisions based on what you saw. Uh, we talked about the tools that we have, meaning the score sheets and, and marking for patterns of play. Uh, any of the events that I'm overseeing, I make sure that the video refs are tracking that and communicating it to the center referee. And then the importance of working together to ensure a fair outcome. And I just have a couple, you know, um, analogies, you know, working together, we can accomplish, you know, re really, really creative and, 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 and good things depending on the angles that we have. And, uh, I'll wind it up with a little story on, on training and the importance of teamwork. Um, you know, when I, when I reviewed the military training and what they do, uh, this is an example of, of, of what they do in their elite Navy SEAL training. Uh, all these teams are brought together into groups of seven. They're divided up onto a beach, three on each side and a coxman. Uh, and the, the groups are formed on the beach and then they're instructed that they have to get through the surf zone uh, and then paddle miles down the coast to their destination. The winter surf can be up to eight to 10 feet and it, it can become very, very difficult. But what's important is that everyone has to dig together and they have to paddle uh, and sequence at the same count. Uh, if, if they don't, they, they become uh, sideways and their, board, their, their boat's overturned. So the example is really to help you understand that the referee and the video referee have to work together, um, you know, to get through the rough patches and then make sure that they're getting to the destination, which is what we really want to do is, is, is to make sure that the match is presented uh, at its highest level, that we have a fair outcome and uh, that, that uh, the, the sport is presented that way. Um, so, I mean, that kind of, we'll, we'll go through some questions uh, and, and, and conclusions, but uh, I want to make sure that as we uh, all stop the, the, the recording, um, but I want to make sure that we, I want everyone to know how much we appreciate your time. And now your feedback is really important in the questions that we have to make this also a presentation for other people and to help you better understand what we're looking through. Uh, the last comment I always have is how you view things determines how you do things. So how you look at it is really going to determine what your decision is and understanding that what we have. So I am going to stop sharing my screen and uh, um, stop the recording.